Hello everyone and welcome back to part development in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 and what I have for you today is at the top of this rocket you might have noted that the rocket's mass on the launch pad was 26.8-ish tons I think I, think, I don't know if it includes the launch clamps or not the rocket is sort of inconsequential except as sort of a benchmark because there's sort of a challenge that I thought up the challenge is who can build the smallest rocket capable of launching the payload at the top of this rocket on a Mars flyby. And once you see the payload, you will understand. Uh, well, this is getting a little bit twitchy, isn't it? Uh, this engine right now is just an NK-9. It is a quickly built rocket. Uh, again, sort of as a basic standard that I think you guys can easily beat. Uh, the upper stage here is actually the third stage of Pegasus, that's an Orion 38. Ooh, it's really wiggling. Maybe I shouldn't have put fins at all, to be honest. Um, I'm worried about taking it off of Smart ASS right now. So, efficiency-wise, this isn't a hugely efficient rocket. So, should be easy to beat. And yeah, I even threw in the Pegasus instrument unit there just for show. That's why it looks like that instead of being all black. Uh, if you watched the Pegasus video, uh, you'll have seen that before. Alright, here we go. With this stage. And let's get rid of that nose cone, it looks a little bit awkward right now anyway. Uh... Okay, so this is our payload. It's a Marco. Uh, Mars CubeSat. Uh, Mars Cube 1, I think it is. And it comes in three parts. There's the antenna part, the box part, which is the bus, and then a little UHF antenna. And uh, the bus contains the solar panels. I'm still working on exactly how solar panels are supposed to work. I'm pretty sure the real one only tracks on the top. Well, I say tracks. It doesn't actually pivot. It just um, gets solar power from it. So this one doesn't pivot either after it's deployed. We're going to be close to making orbit here, but not quite. But that's as planned. The upper stage in here is a hypergolic stage that will complete orbit and transfer us to Mars. Now obviously, generally speaking, in real life they don't just launch one CubeSat. Even the Electron rocket launches a bunch of them at the same time. Okay. Uh, let's quickly have Mechjeb plot us for Mars. I timed it correctly, so I think that even though we're not in orbit, we can do a direct sort of thing. Alright, so 8 minutes, so that'll be before we start descending, because we've got 12 minutes to apoapsis. Okay. This is only 0.372 tons right now. This is merely 2.2 uh, slash 3.6 kilonewton thruster burning ma-methylhydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide. It's got a bunch of RCS thrusters for orientation. Speaking of which, let me turn off this box's RCS as soon as we get to when we're going to start the burn. It's just got one newton thrusters, eight of them that use nitrogen. So not very efficient, basically just for orienting it properly and that's it. So not going to be able to do any major maneuvers. Okay, so off with those, on with the RCS, which has not been staged, oops. There we go. It's actually safe right now to deploy everything here, so let's do that. So right-clicking here, extend solar panel. This took me a lot of time. As small as it is, because of the animations, I'm sort of proud of myself because the animations are sort of complicated. They're these are a little bit tilted. Um, I did that for safety's sake because of the orientation I expected to keep it at. I think uh, in most of the... ooh, that sort of collided. In most of the pictures, they're completely flat, but I don't completely understand that. The antenna is interesting because it's got the focuser up here, or I don't know what you call, want to call it, but that flips out. And then the UHF antenna just extends downward. That was easy. 
So it's like that. And it's got the eight thrusters on the back. I didn't do a very complicated job on the texture for the bus. But you can sort of see the no nubs, the nozzles back there. Why am I picturing a Kerbal sitting on top of this thing? Now I went by certain images, well, uh, an image indicating the dimensions of this. And it seemed like a little bit bigger than the normal six unit CubeSat. Those are supposed to be 10 by 20 by 30. This was not quite like that. It was a little bit bigger than those dimensions, but it shouldn't be, so I was confused. But I went with the dimensions on that image instead of just going 10 by 20 by 30. So if you want it to be exact, I think you'll have to scale the parts down by a factor of 0.86 or something like that. Okay, well, we should have something going on, right? It's, that didn't seem very precise. Okay, yeah, we have a Mars encounter. That's good enough for me. They're only supposed to do flybys and help with communication. They're probably flying by a little bit closer than this. But okay, um, let's decouple that. Whoa, that is a very forceful decoupling. Oh, and uh, we need to activate the RCS now. Make sure it can orient. Let's go prograde. Any plume will be relatively big compared to this tiny little CubeSat. I did put a little bit more volume in here than I think is strictly correct. Um, assuming it's a six unit CubeSat, it would only have six units of volume. But I wasn't sure exactly how the nitrogen would be compressed for the cold gas thrusters. So I gave it more room for the nitrogen. If you wanted to scale it back, um, you could divide the electric charge and nitrogen by a factor of 2.5 in the configuration, and that'll do the trick. That'll limit it to six units. Okay, um, let's make sure that we can get solar power. And that means that the top of these panels should be facing the sun. Okay, and if we select the bus, we can see that we've got energy flow starting out here. And it'll be maxed out when the top of the panels are facing the sun. And that should be more enough to supply enough power for the bus, even at Mars, assuming you're oriented right. Okay, anyway, let me show you how to put this together in the VAB. Okay, in the VAB, you should be able to get the parts by typing in Marco in the search field once it decides to do its thing. You, but the capitalization is any way you like it. So there's the bus. Well, you can see how small it is. It was actually hard to work with it because it's so small. Um, there we are. Okay, and then the Marco antenna to orient it properly, W, D, D, so D twice to make sure that the antenna portion is on the back of it. And then uh, this UHF antenna, W, D, and down on, down on there, and then it extends like that. And the solar panel deployment, it, it happens much faster inside the VA beat and outside. So that's what it looks like. And all told, as you can see, 14 kilograms. Pretty heavy for a CubeSat of this size, but then again, it's sort of special. And it's got the node on the tail to attach to anything else. So two of these CubeSats went along with the Mars InSight mission that's going to land on Mars on November 26th, I believe. And they're just going to be relaying information from that mission back to Earth, which makes them the first interplanetary CubeSats, and they were made by JPL, and I, I found them particularly cute and special, so I decided to make them, and possibly I'll be making more little CubeSats, especially because somebody requested that I do that one PSLV launch where they launched like a hundred of them, so I'll have to take a look at that. I don't know exactly how to eject a hundred CubeSats just yet, and that should be fun, but anyway, uh, so I thought to make this. If you're wondering about the Mars InSight lander, parts for that are pretty much available already. Um, you could use the surveyor core for the base of it, 
put some instruments, uh, scientific instruments, um, on top of it. And you can use the circular panels from near future. So the near future panels like this, circular concentrating photovoltaic array. And hopefully you've got tweak scale on yours so that you can make sure it fits the lander appropriately, right? And then you have basically got it. If you're wondering about how to do the, the entry vehicle, what I would suggest is first getting a fuel tank. Um, that'll be fine. Uh, where is the fuel tank? There it is. Uh, making it a smooth cone, probably. Small top. And then an upside down one of these. And this is an old idea. I don't know where I picked it up from. Probably conic. And we will want to customize that shape. So you've got sort of an arrow shell sort of thing. And then it's going to have a node at the bottom here. So you can put your, your lander there. You'll have to be careful about how you attach it though. And the little panels and everything. And then, of course, at the bottom of it, you'll want a decoupler. Well, you don't strictly need a decoupler for the heat shield. Um, these can be extended a little bit more, extra height. Okay, and then the heat shield, whatever heat shield you want. And you'll put the parachutes and some thrusters on this part so that it can be controlled, possibly retro rockets. You should have enough volume for that. And that's basically how I do it. So yeah, I don't think I'll be making a Mars Insight pack because we've got tools for that, but I, I didn't see any tools that would allow us to make a CubeSat. Everything is too big for that. So that's why I'm going to be linking the Marco Mars Cube 1 CubeSats in the video description. For your enjoyment and again there's a little bit of a challenge can you build the smallest rocket capable of launching that little cubesat over to mars on a flyby so with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time